think it's interesting that, you know, one of the things we strive to do in the family law context is empower parties to come up with their own agreements that mm -hmm. we've always, you know, um, because it is a family, mm -hmm. you know, we don't approach it as, um, as adversarial per se, um, but rather, you know, this is, this is a new situation. And so how do we navigate from where we are to where you want to go um, in a way that is mutually agreeable to, you know, both parties because many times, if you know, if not all the time, they're going to continue to be a family in some way, shape, way or shape. Um, and so that's, that's really important. But, you know, I think it's interesting when you're talking about, you know, that balancing that, that criminal prosecutors have, you know, between, between trying to rehabilitate and, you know, trying to punish crime, you know, for, you know, in general, the idea would be, you know, any punishment is meant to deter future crime. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really, really tough. Like, I, and I don't think you know this, but um, when I came out of college, I was involved in a think tank that, um, where we had to, you know, present you know, a, a problem and some mm -hmm. initiatives to solve the problem. And our problem was over incarceration, mm -hmm. you know, like where we were over incarcerating people for felonies and creating societal problems for families in particular, because once you send a person into prison versus a community based mm -hmm. program, then you have an ex con. Yep. that you're trying to employ yep. and then there's all the you know how do these how do people who are ex-convicts they're not employable they have a difficult time getting housing they can't pay child support in the meantime while they're incarcerated they're not paying child support mm -hmm. and so it creates this trickle down to their children and to their spouses of you know not receiving support it deprives you know the community of sometimes business people who yep. are owning business and employing other people and um, and then when I first got to Colorado Springs um, I volunteered with Woodman Valley Chapel um, helping them to place people coming out of prison um, who were dealing with those very issues you know mm -hmm. where they had gone you know and been incarcerated you know based on crimes that they in general had um, admitted to um, but then there was that whole struggle of you know transportation housing mm -hmm. um, employment getting reintegrated with their children starting to pay support you know etc so it's um, it's very interesting I had a, a professor in law school who always said the law is a seamless web <laughs> and so it's kind of I don't know I mean I think for us it's um, I know a lot of people ask me, and I don't know if anyone's asked you, but um, or ever asked you as a prosecutor, but like I don't know how you do this family law work. I would think I know I've heard criminal um, defense attorneys ask, I don't know how you could defend a criminal, mm -hmm. and I've I've heard a variety of answers as to how come. Most of which is, hey, it's to protect all of our right. constitutional rights. But have you heard that question? I've I've heard it surprisingly more since I took the family law job than I did as a prosecutor. <laughs> right. I heard I heard it occasionally as a prosecutor where, you know, it's it's one of those situations where someone's saying, Well, how can that's all you deal with is the worst of mm -hmm. the worst every day. How can you deal with that? And it's 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 just simply a misunderstanding of the thing. It's it's not a situation where in a, in prosecution you're dealing with the worst of the worst every day. Right. A good portion of the people that have contacts with the criminal justice system are somebody who made a simple mistake right. Right? whether it's out of anger the a poor judgment you know in the county court rules you'll be dealing with people who have traffic offenses mm -hmm. careless driving is one mm -hmm. of them you rear end somebody and now all of a sudden you're seeing a prosecutor right and so it's not that situation you're dealing with just normal citizens mm -hmm. and then every now and then you have somebody that is a chronic offender or a mm -hmm. repeat offender and you're 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 trying to take the appropriate steps mm -hmm. to make sure that they can't do that again. Mm -hmm. In the family law context, I've heard it more from anecdotally where people are saying, oh, that's just the worst. All you're going to be dealing with is people fighting over everything and fighting over the kids. And I don't know how you can do that every day. And at least from my experience so far, it, it's not about, and I think it, 
it's going to be very dependent upon the lawyer mm -hmm. and the firm that the lawyer that works at. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a situation and you're dealing with a family that's splitting up, yes, mm. there's the potential that you can fight over every topic and you can fight over every small thing and every minute with the kids mm -hmm. and you can essentially weaponize those. But I think part of the lawyer's job is to make sure that's not necessarily where that case ends up. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're walking somebody through it and you're saying, this is an individual you're going to be dealing with for the remainder of your life, whether you want to or not. If there's a child involved, that's likely to be the situation you're going to find yourself.